Thank you very much. So today I'd like to tell you that a room the size of the closet in your hallway could one day save your life. You see, most of the people in this room are, here, are from here in Lubbock, which means that what we're going to talk about is not a hypothetical exercise. To us, this is real. We've spent one night or one day watching or glued to our televisions watching the weathermen track a thunderstorm that may spawn a tornado, because to us, tornadoes are real. And to many people in this country, specifically those in Tornado Alley, we've done this at some time between March and August. You see, the statistics tell me that most of the people in this room don't know what they would do if a tornado touched down right now. And popular opinion tells me that most of the people in this room don't believe that sheltering above ground can be a safe alternative. You believe that because for, for decades, You've heard one of two claims framed in one of two ways. Either if you want to survive a tornado, you have to be below ground, or if you shelter above ground, you don't stand a chance. And these are wrong. They're just flat wrong. You see, there are two things I'd like you to take away from this conversation. The first is in the eventuality of a tornado, you need to have a plan. That plan needs to include a safe place. And the second is that safe place can be above ground. The Federal Emergency Management Agency estimates that 10,000 lives per year are saved in the United States simply by having a plan and a safe place to go. And in the face of what's going on right behind me and what you see, that is paramount. In this country, we do a very good job in a different realm of disaster management, fire safety. When it comes to fire safety, we have this down. Distributing information is easy. Firefighters show up to schools and they speak to our children. My children drill me all the time about our fire plan. It gets kind of annoying. Okay? But we have this figured out. The question I have is why is this t the same level of diligence not exercised in all other places where we have to plan for a disaster? You see, for the last four decades, storm shelter research has been going on here at Texas Tech University. This is where the first above ground storm shelter was designed. And since then, a lot of things have changed. Specifically in the last 15 years, there are organizations that have been founded that have come up with a unified set of metrics so that the storm shelter that you buy will have met these metrics, and when it has to perform, it will. And yet some, still out of a, I don't know, a sense to sensationalize these events, to, cap to capitalize on the visceral response that we get from being in the, the presence of something awe-inspiring, be it through the rush or the ratings, have sought to instill fear while others, for the last 40 years, have tried to replace that fear. No fear, no doubt, no panic. They've sought to provide an environment that is safe and secure. See, that panic that some of you may have, sometimes it comes from being unprepared, sometimes it comes from being uninformed. And if that was the case, I would be fine. You see, this is a topic that's near and dear to my heart. But that's not where it always comes from. It comes from being misinformed. And this disinformation campaign that has spread is a problem. I'll get to it more specifically when we talk about more, but it's a problem, okay? Four decades ago, in May of 1970, this is where storm shelter research started, here in Lubbock. For those that don't know, what would have been rated an EF5 tornado hit downtown Lubbock. 26 people lost their lives, and one-third of this city was completely destroyed. Recent events and recent history have shown us that the 1970 tornado was not unique. In May of 1999, Oklahoma City was hit. <clears throat> After touring the disaster ground or the disaster region, President Clinton and then head of FEMA, James Lee Witt, established for the first time in this country's history a subsidization program, a storm shelter assistance program to help people offset the cost of ensuring their safety. To date, several states have similar programs and several towns do as well. Since 1999, it's estimated that over 30,000 shelters have been installed in homes to help save people's lives. And that number keeps growing, and that makes us happy. Now, I could keep going. I could tell you that in 2011, more, or I'm sorry, Joplin was hit. I could tell you what Joplin looked like on the ground. I could tell you about Tuscaloosa and Birmingham. But we really needn't talk about anything other than last year, when on May 20th of 2013, more Oklahoma was hit and an EF5 tornado touched down. It was on the ground for 40 minutes. It tore a damaged swath 17 miles long. And to give you a little perspective, that's longer than the island of Manhattan. Yet, 
After this event, still, with a preponderance of evidence, had they been looking, so-called experts came out and said, if you, sheltered, if you sheltered above ground, you didn't stand a chance. So a team of us from Texas Tech went to Moore, Oklahoma. A lot of the pictures that you see behind me are from that deployment. We sought out every single storm shelter that was directly hit by the tornado. Before we left this city, we found 60. When we got there, the game changed on us. Storm shelters were everywhere. You see, Moore has been hit a minimum of four times in the last 15 years. So these people are committed to being prepared for the next event. Some of the shelters that we found were new, some were old, some had been tested, some had not. Most of the ones that had not had predated the testing regimens. But every single shelter we found that had been tested and had been certified survived. But more than that, every single person that sought shelter inside did too. There was another interesting claim, and the, or an interesting observation that we made, and that was that there's a very sizable elderly population in Moore. And after interviewing many of them, we found that they had tremendous physical difficulty traversing the stairs down into their shelter, and then once the storm had passed, back up and out the same staircase. Some went as far as to say that in the next tornado, they weren't going back down there. And this is an unfortunate set of circumstances, born of the fact that the only thing that they've ever heard is that you have to be below ground. Had those claims been absent, perhaps right now they'd own an above ground storm shelter. And the stair problem would be a non-issue. Now, fast forward less than a month, May 31st. The same geographic region was hit, this time El Reno. After more, the public did everything they could to assimilate as much information as they could. Inevitably, some of them found themselves listening to the same claims. If you were above ground, you had no chance. But after the Moore event, there was one more. The new claim was, if you can't get below ground, you best get out of the way. So on May 31st, when a 2.6 mile wide tornado touched down, a tornado that was on the ground for another 17 miles, again, longer than the island of Manhattan, but at 2.6 miles wide, it was wider than the island at its widest point. When that 2.6 mile wide tornado touched down, it's estimated that over 1,000 people got in their cars, got on the roads to get out of the way, and got stuck in traffic. And there, stranded, eight people lost their lives and 150 were injured. Now, 40 years ago, this might have been acceptable, but this is 40 years later. We've been doing this. We know better. Okay? Storm shelter research has been going on here at Texas Tech for 40 years, and this is an unfortunate set of circumstances. I told you there are two things that I'd like you to take away from this. The first is you have to have a plan, and the second is that I want you to understand that there are safe alternatives to shelter above ground. To do that, I could continue giving you numbers. I mean, my wife, who's here, she would tell you that I can tell you a story, and at the end of it, you could build whatever I told you about. I'm an engineer, right? That's how we think. But like John Madden said, let's go to the tape. What we have here are above-ground storm shelters. And these above-ground storm shelters can be brought to our debris impact facility here at Texas Tech, where we fire 15-pound 2x4s at speeds of 100-plus miles per hour. And as you can see right behind me, the structures are not perforated. The people inside would be safe. To give you a little bit of a comparison, in a second, you're going to see normal wood frame construction. Gypsum wallboard over studs spaced at 16 inches. And when we see that system, you're going to see a two by four slide through that wall like a hot knife through butter. To give you a perspective, we've all seen a car accident. That's what the same board does to your car. Auto glass, specifically engineered not to break, not to shatter, slides right through. To give you a perspective of the energy involved in this process, this is a specially engineered product. It's about this thick, and that's how much it deformed. And the final one, that's to show you that if it's designed properly, even glass can stop these things. Now, given what you've seen, two by fours breaking on storm shelters like a bug on a windshield, I pose this question to you. Would you feel safe in those buildings if a tornado touched down right now? and took the building apart around us. And back to my first point, we do such a great job of preaching fire safety in this country, and it's our children that are most diligent. But we have to be committed to being prepared before an event, because safety comes about from the actions that we make, which means every single person in this room, every single person that sees this talk, I hope you spread the word. 
Because as Margaret Mead once said, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And in many places, not just tech, knowledgeable people with the means and the buy-in have made living through a tornado more than a desire, more than an aspiration, it's now achievable. So if you live in an area where a tornado is possible, know that above ground can be a safe place. And like we do with our children, make a plan, because it just might save your life. Thank you very much.